the American audience wants racy programming, whether it's sexual content, violent content. We like things that we're not supposed to do. Being this is a 44 Magnum, the most powerful handgun in the world, and would blow your head clean off, you've got to ask yourself one question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? As a parent, my concern is the amount of violence that has crept into the family hour. At what point do we say enough is enough? And they bleeped out a, a single utterance of the word <laughs> And not even a, two minutes later, we saw a knife thrust into a woman's breast and pulled out with a breast implant impaled on the knife dripping with blood. Regulations on indecency by the Federal Communications Commission have primarily focused on language and sexual content. Yet television exposes viewers to shootings, stabbings, and wild stunts on a daily basis. All of this raises the question, if objectionable sexual content and language can be lawfully channeled to times of the day when children will less likely watch, why not have the same standard for violent programming? For Tennessee Matters, I'm Terry Likes. Hey, Robert. What? F*** you. Whether it is language, violence, or sex, Liz Fogel, the parent of a three-year-old, expresses concern over today's television shows. And I think kids are losing some of their innocence with some of the things that are on TV these days. Is there a difference in the regulations and audience opinion concerning sexual content, foul language, and violence? Many will remember the famed Seven Dirty Words routine by the late comedian George Carlin. People start talking about sex and violence like they're one thing. There's some sort of a gray area between sex and violence that some people really are confused about. In the old days of television, The Dick Van Dyke Show. You did not hear swear words or see sexual content. In fact, you would have seen a married couple sleeping in separate beds, such as in the Dick Van Dyke pilot episode in 1961. But then how do you know he's sick? Well, there are symptoms. What symptoms? Well... Come on, I'm the boy's father. <laughs> he turned down his cupcake. <laughs> and in TV's early days, if a woman was expecting a child, writers would not have used the word pregnant, as it was considered taboo. It was a more simple time, when network standards and practices were more rigid. But TV crime shows and westerns depicted plenty of violent scenes. The Rifleman. While times have changed, Dr. Jeffrey Blevins, associate professor of journalism and communication at Iowa State University, wonders why society worries more about language and sex and not violence. One point you're never going to win with that argument is that it, it doesn't affect all people the same way. And you know, I'd, I would be willing to see there is no clear cause and effect relationship that watching violence causes violence. However, there are some strong correlations, and I don't think it's something that should be absolutely banned even from broadcast television. But if we can lawfully channel sexual content and profane language to times of the day when children aren't in the audience, why can't we do the same for violence? I'll double your money. That was a scene from a 1953 episode of The Untouchables. Violence is defined in many ways, according to Dr. Richard Vogel, an associate professor of digital communication at William Penn University. With violence, there runs the range. Different studies have said me yelling at you is violence, and violence is also me stabbing you or hitting you with an axe. So which acts of violence are we seeking to regulate? Can we provide a definition that goes to those specific acts that are causing harm? And I would contend that would be a challenge. Research shows kids sometimes mimic a favorite TV show. Studies found children would often watch a Western, then play with guns. In fact, a child once watched Superman, and then, thinking he could fly, jumped off his roof. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Professor Blevins says the argument of regulating violence is we can't define it. There is no clear cause and effect relationship. But Blevins says there is far more research on extensive and graphic violence, which provides the context leading to three negative effects on children. Aggression, desensitization, and fear. And if we are willing to accept as a simple anecdote, as the Supreme Court has said, that kids hear four-letter words, they'll repeat them, then why don't we listen to the vast amounts of scientific research that says, you know, hey, there's a real concern here. Dr. Rick Vogel admits research is varied on whether there is a causal link between what kids see on TV and whether that translate into violent acts committed by children. 
what variables might make somebody react to violence. I think we need to define those variables, the context of that I view the violence in from a personal nature and the context of the violence on the screen. Violence can often be thought of as slapstick, such as the Three Stooges. Put a hole by my nose so I can breathe! Okay. And okay? Fine! Violence may also appear in the form of car chases or shootouts. <laughs> Dr. Cynthia Cooper, chairperson of the Mass Communication and Communication Studies program at Towson University, discusses effectiveness of the Telecommunications Act of 1996, which brought us the TV rating system, parental locks, and the V-chip saying at the time many were hopeful this would be a great tool for parents in a non-regulatory way to address the concerns over media violence. But Cooper admits years later, It really hasn't done much of anything. But I still believe it was the right path because I do believe that the majority of the responsibility falls on parents. They have the tools now. If we could get them to use it, I think then it would really be a success. But parent Liz Fogel questions the value of the rating system. Something that I think is violent, another parent may not, and that's okay. But where's the standard as far as, yes, this is a little violent or really violent or not violent? Professor Cooper adds the concept of the media made me do it premise, correlating video games to violent acts. And then there's a whole a host of cases that have to do specifically with violent video games, mostly with young men, oftentimes with school shootings, but also shootings of parents, random violence, uh, and cop killings, things like that. Dr. Heather Polinski is an assistant professor in the School of Broadcast and Cinematic Arts at Central Michigan University. Her research points to the uncertainty of TV effects on the audience which makes it difficult to justify a change in the current mode of programming. Because we just don't know with absolute certainty why certain television content may cause some person to act out, but most of the rest of the audience has no effect. Dr. Polinsky says violent programming is popular, as evidenced in a recent Nielsen broadcast primetime ratings analysis, which shows nearly half of the top 20 programs that have critical acclaim have violent content. And it's seen as cathartic, it's seen as things that we don't do in our normal lives. It's novel, so we enjoy watching it because we can't do it. We're not supposed to be violent, we don't want to be too sexual, so we crave watching other people do that on television and films. But should Congress regulate violence on television? That is a philosophical question. But Dr. Rick Vogel states violence has a negative impact on children. There is some significant evidence that in some situations it can have some effect. If Congress believes that effect is to the point where children are being harmed, there may be some justification for it. So should they? You can make a good argument for it. In today's age of new media, younger people often watch more TV episodes online, which often comes without the same censors that apply to broadcast television. It makes Dr. Jeffrey Blevins, who is published in the Journal of Children and Media, wonder if regulation is a moot point. Are we spitting into the wind? And I think that's a really a good point, especially as more and more content becomes available in these other mediums. But yet the indecency rules for sexual content and language still persist. It would seem to me that if we're going to be consistent on that, then we would wipe away those indecency rules as well. For parent Liz Fogel, she has to turn off the television, as she is very specific about shows her child can watch. You may call me a helicopter parent. I call myself an informed parent. With the world kind of teetering on what's moral and immoral at this point, you know, I want to raise a child that, that has good values and have, has good morals. So I want to know what she's watching. They're very impressionable at a young age, but their kids are very impressionable at any age. Distinguished journalist Edward R. Murrow once said, the responsibility can be easily placed, in spite of all the mouthings about giving the public what it wants. Responsibility, he added, promises its own reward, good business, and good television. This instrument can teach, it can illuminate, yes, and even it can inspire. But it can do so only to the extent that humans are determined to use it to those ends. Otherwise, it's nothing but wires and lights in a box. I'm Terry Likes. You're listening to Tennessee Matters from the Tennessee Radio Network.